cliché, but honestly, Terry, I haven't a single thing to wear. Well, I'm broad-minded. You can sleep in the raw, if you like. <laughs> I'm talking about next Thursday, when we have dinner with Sir Dennis. I, I just haven't a dress to wear. Well, you better wear something, unless you intend sitting there in your underwear. That should put him off his greens. <laughs> Actually, darling, I saw the most lovely dress in Angelique's in the high street. That would have suited the occasion perfectly. Mm. We've got tons of dresses in there. Anyone will do very nicely, thank you. Oh, not really, darling. I mean, this is an invitation to dinner in Sir Dennis's home. Don't you think we should buy something special for it? We certainly will. A new dress? Some indigestion tablets. <laughs> I believe the food is foul. Honestly, oh, Terry, I wish you could have seen this dress. It's really lovely. How much? It's this marvellous, rich colour. <laughs> it's very subtle, but very rich. No, I'm not, so how much? Oh, at the price? Oh, it's very reasonable. In fact, it's a steal. Mm. Well, I'm stealing myself to here. <laughs> how much? Well, it's only... You know, you're not going to believe this. Probably not, but how, how much? Yes, well, all right. It's, um, it's under 93 pounds. 93? <laughs> 93 pounds? No, no, actually, it's 92 pounds, 99. 92? Well, it's not expensive for a dress, not these days. 92, 99? You couldn't find a dress of similar quality in the West End for that price. I'm sure I couldn't, because I have no intention of looking for one. 92, 99. I mean, you, you've got the lovely... Lovely, lovely green dress in there. That old thing, I can't wear that. It makes you look like a million dollars. Yes, all green and wrinkled. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Is that what you want? Huh? Is that what you really want? What? For me to have dinner with your chairman in that old dress. For me to sit down at Sir Dennis's table in his big house in that dreary old green thing, in that old-fashioned, outmoded, deeply unattractive rag? Is that what you really want? Yes. <laughs> I don't think you mean that. I do. Clothes maketh the man, remember? Maybe, but what maketh the wife is whether the wife can maketh do with the clothes she's got it. <laughs> It's 93 pounds, but we did get that tax rebate. Ah, 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 ah. No, 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 no. We didn't get that tax rebate. I got that tax rebate. And I have already earmarked that money for, uh, for something else. What? Well, <clears throat> since the vicar has asked me to take a photograph of the church for the parish magazine, I thought it might be time if we sort of, as it were, bought a new camera. A new camera? What's wrong with the old one? Nothing at all. But there's a man in the office, He's he's got a single lens reflex. He's selling at half the price he paid for it. It really is a bargain. The camera we've got is less than a year old and it takes marvellous pictures. I, I know that, I know that, but, but, but nevertheless... Well, what does this other camera do that ours doesn't? Well, it has no comparison. In what way? Well, in every way. <laughs> Be specific. Well, I'm being specific. In every way, it is better specifically. <laughs> One. Well, uh, for a start... Yes? Um, <clears throat> the definite disadvantage of the camera we've got is that... What? I can't find it. <laughs> it's in the bottom drawer in the spare room. No, I'm sure I've looked there. You couldn't have or you'd have found it. And if that's the only reason you want a new camera, it is a pretty pathetic one. Well, of course it's not the only reason. I mean, I mean there's loads of things that... Much better than our little old box brownie that we bought, for heaven's sake. Well, I mean, uh, I mean, it's got, for instance, it's got a uh, uh, fixed mat, fixed mat horizontal viewfinder, uh, focal plane electronic shutter, push button function control, complete manual override, switch dedicated flash facility. I found it. And, and of course, it comes complete with lens cap and neck strap. Do you know what all that means? Well, of course I do. It means you can hang it round your neck. <laughs> I don't mean the neck strap. I mean the rest of it. Rest? Yes, the stuff you were spouting while I was out of the room. What was it again? Hey, what? I didn't quite catch all that technical stuff. Tell me again. Well, you don't want to hear all that stuff again. <laughs> yes, I do. Well, <clears throat> it's got, uh, it's got a, a lens cap and a neck strap. <laughs> yes, I heard the bit about the next trap. It's the rest I want to hear. It's the rest. Well, it's yeah. got uh, uh, an, an electronic push button, uh, full frontal flashing <laughs> <laughs> unit. 
Yes. And it's got an overriding, overriding um, mini metro desiccated <laughs> bifocal function, uh, functioning things, you know, with, with the bent, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it thing, you know? With optional um, manual functional abilities, should the automatic function uh, ever cease, well, probably wouldn't, uh, to, uh, to function. <laughs> Is that what you said the first time? Roughly, give or take a few functions. <laughs> so, what does it all mean? Well, what it means is that this camera, which I'm thinking, just thinking of buying, is, is an incredibly sophisticated machine. So is this one? All you do is point it and press it and it takes perfect pictures every time. Uh, yeah, I know, but it's, I mean, it's totally inflexible. I mean, all it does is just take simple pictures. Well, what do you want it to do? Make the tea? <laughs> no, it's not. You want to shave with it? No. Play with it in the bar? Look, look. <laughs> I'm telling you that that camera, a professional will give his right arm for it. I shouldn't think there's much demand for one arm photographers. <laughs> And it sells in the shop for over £200. And this man is asking a measly, ridiculous £100. £100? Laughable, isn't it? <laughs> oh, do I look as if I'm laughing? Well, not on the outside, but deep down inside you, you could be convulsed. <laughs> the thought of spending £100 on another camera is enough to give anyone convulsions. Well, at least we've only got one other camera. I mean, you've got dozens of dresses in there and you're, you, you want to spend £92.99 on another one. Actually, I don't. Whew, I'm relieved to hear it. Because I've already bought it. <laughs> but I'm sorry, darling, I, I just couldn't resist it. Oh, Jew. Well, it fitted me so perfectly. But, I mean, how could you? I mean, we agreed that we wouldn't spend more than £50 of our joint account without informing the other partner. Yes, I know, but, mm. well, that was years ago and I had to have that dress. Well, what is the point of having agreements if we don't... If we don't stick to them? Well, I'm sorry, darling. You know, I mean, marriage is based on mutual trust. There's no good going on your knees. Groveling won't help. <laughs> Groveling? The dress is in a box under the bed. Oh, no. Uh, get out. <laughs> uh, what's this? Ah. SLR camera. Ah, ah so, so that's where it got to. <laughs> well done. Terry? Yeah? What's this camera doing under the bed? I don't know. It's probably taking a picture of your new dress. <laughs> You've bought it, haven't you? There you go. There you go. Jumping to conclusions again. Have you, or have you not, bought this camera? What would you say? What would you say if I said no? I wouldn't make you feel a bit, a bit ashamed? Wouldn't you feel a tiny bit guilty for jumping to such rash conclusions? Oh, if they were rash, yes. Ah. But I'd still want to see your chequebook. Uh. Mm. Just to see if you'd written a cheque for £100 in the last day or two. And what would you say to that? I would say that you have a mean, suspicious mind. Yes, but if I insisted... Then I would have to say... Yes, I bought it. <laughs> no, don't get on your high horse. I mean, you bought that dress without telling me and there was no justification for that. Oh, what, you can justify buying this. I certainly can. It is for my church and my vicar. Oh. I want to take the best possible picture I can for the parish magazine. But this old camera would have done that perfectly well. Even I can take decent photos with it. Well, all right, all right. We'll, we'll take them both down to the church on Saturday and we'll let the vicar choose the best picture. And remember, I may have spent money without telling you, but at least I bought something we can both use. Oh, you let me use your new camera. It's not my new camera. It's our new camera. <laughs> well, that's very generous of you, darling. Not at all. Well, yes, it is. And in return, yeah. any time you like, you can wear my new dress. <laughs> oh, superb light, wonderful. Perfect for the kind of pictures I want to take. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh. Oh, super angry. Oh, this is going to make a wonderful picture. I know. I've just taken it. Huh? <laughs> I think I call it, He Stoops to Conquer. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't come here to waste film. We've got a job of work to do. Well, I'm all ready. I've just taken my first photo. Are you sure there was a film in a camera? Of course I am. Huh? You'd be amazed how often the amateur photographer makes that simple mistake. That is why a keen photographer always has a checklist 
That way he ensures that he forgets nothing. Now, uh, light meter, lens hood, filters, clamp, hand grip, cable release, spare films, flash unit, lenses, uh, large tripod, small tripod. Ah, lock the car up from really long. Are you sure you've got everything? Everything I need to take a perfect photograph under any conditions. Not quite everything, surely. Can you think of anything I've forgotten? Just one small item. What? Your camera. <laughs> I hadn't forgotten it. I was leaving it for you to bring. Oh, yes. This is very expensive equipment. If you try to carry too much at once, you might just drop some of it. <laughs> oh, Terry. <Hoops! laughs> My dear sir. I'm terribly sorry. Are you all right? Just about, yeah. yeah. I should never have left this lying about in the doorway in the first place. What the hell was it? Terry! Sorry, Vic. <laughs> Quite understandable the circumstances, June. He's just tripped over my scout pole. Your scout pole? Mm, I'm afraid so. Oh, Vicar, you're not thinking of starting the scout troop again, are you? Oh, good heavens, no. We've only just finished rebuilding the parish hall after the last attempt. <laughs> I still think it was a worthwhile thing to try. Mm, perhaps. But I obviously tried to interest the wrong type of youngster in the scouting movement. It was more like the Hitler Youth Movement. <laughs> There's good in everyone, Terry. But what was the name of that thug you had as troop leader? The one with the bent nail in his ear. <laughs> <laughs> what was his name again? You mean young Acid Head? <laughs> Ac Acid Head? Yes. He insisted we use that nickname during all scout meetings. He refused to ask to his real one. Uh -huh. What was that? Dwayne Spigot. <laughs> Dwayne Spigot. Don't think I'd have answered to it either. Well, he had a lot of problems, June. I happen to know he came from a broken home. Mm, and I happen to know he was the one who broke it. <laughs> yes, well, he was always good with his hands. <laughs> I, I rather wish he was here at the moment, actually. I've been trying to measure the floor area of the vestibule. Oh, so that's what you were using the scout pole for? Mm, yes. As you may know, Mr. Jackson, the solicitor, is recently deceased. And has very kindly left us funds in his will to provide us with a new carpet. How very generous of him. Mm, yeah, especially as he hardly put a foot on the old one. <laughs> he was always out on the golf course. Well, I think I ought to tell you that we are interring him here this afternoon at 2.30. Will your, uh, your photographic session be finished by then? We'll make sure it is. Unless the relatives would like a few snaps of the occasion. <laughs> I don't think so, Terry. <laughs> After all, it's hardly an event one is likely to look back on with any fondness. I'll uh, see you before you go. Yes, yes, right, Austin. Mm. I'll bet there'll be a lot of people at that funeral this afternoon to make sure that Jackson goes. Terry! <laughs> the poor man has just died. Mm, it's the only decent thing he did in his life. <laughs> he couldn't even play golf properly. In fact, when they lay him in the grave this afternoon, it'll be the first time in his life he's got in a hole in under nine strokes. <laughs> I've taken all the pictures I want. How about you? I haven't taken any yet. What on earth have you been doing? I've shot off nearly an entire reel. Yes, I heard you. Clicking away like a demented Spanish dancer. <laughs> An experienced photographer, however, needs only take one photograph to capture what he's after. Take time to select the correct viewpoint and angle of shot that will convey the impression you receive of the subject. And what impression do you receive? I'm still searching for that viewpoint. <laughs> Tell me that I don't seem to be able to get low enough or back enough. Uh, I want to convey the majesty and strength of the building. Then. Uh, you wanted to see me, Sir Dennis? Oh, yes, come in, Medford. Uh, thanks. Sit down. Yes, sir. Oh, what have you done to your hand? Oh, just a mild sprain. I had a slight mishap over the weekend. Oh, yes, there's a small paragraph in the local paper about it. Amateur photographer makes grave mistake. <laughs> I, uh, I didn't know you were interested in photography. Oh, just something I dropped into, sir. Uh, I'm not. <laughs> Done on and off, sir. Oh, hmm. really? Uh, well, uh, what do you make of those? Uh, what, what are these, huh? Uh, pictures from a photo session I had last week for the shareholders' mm. annual brochure. Mm. How do you rate them? Well, frankly, I, I hardly recognise you. Quite. I, mean, I know the small prints, but 
You seem to be holding something in your mouth. Those are my teeth, you idiot. <laughs> uh, teeth? I am smiling. Ah. <laughs> oh, that, that's why I didn't recognise you, sir. I mean, <laughs> I mean you, don't, you don't very often smile. I have very little to smile about. Well, that idiot Culpepper, the president of the shareholders, insisted that I had a warm, friendly photograph of this year's annual brochure. So he said about this Jippo pansy type to snap me in my own home. How very upsetting was sir. It was a nightmare. A nightmare, Medford. You know, he kept saying, give it to me, give it to me. <laughs> give what to him, sir? I shudder to think. Ah, oh, perhaps he was trying to, to encourage you. To do what? Uh, well, you know, I encourage you to, to give you a, give him a bit of oomph. Oomph? <laughs> yeah. Pizzazz. Pizzazz? What the hell are you talking about? I was trying to, you know, get you to project the warmth of your personality. I had no intention of projecting warmth or anything else in his direction. I then thought that kind of thing would be very dangerous. <laughs> and he kept up this meaningless flow of drivel. Super, super. Give it to me, give it to me. <laughs> but like a damn gun dog. <laughs> Well, I mean, a lot of photographers say that sort of thing, sir. Well, I sincerely hope you don't. Oh, wouldn't you, sir? No, sir. And you know, he actually had the temerity to call me Denny, baby. <laughs> mm. True. You, you mean he, he called you, Sir Dennis Hodge, chairman of this mighty company, Denny, baby? <laughs> Relax, Denny, baby, you said. You're far too stiff. My God, Bedford. If he'd been a man, I'd have struck him. <laughs> I don't blame you, sir. And then to make matters worse, when Culpepper saw the end result, he said I looked like a pregnant walrus. Oh, oh you don't look the least bit pregnant, sir. No, I'm not. No, it's just the way you're sitting. Well, it's a damn photographer's fault. He said I should be more laid back. If I'd have been you, I'd have laid him out, sir. Damn it, is And when he left, he said that if I wanted it, he would call round personally and give me a contact strip. Ah, ah, well, he meant the strip of photographs, sir. You hmm? see, he has a lot of technical terms like that, you see. For, for instance, if you put a camera on a low uh, tripod, that is um, putting on a baby. Putting what on a baby? Uh, uh, the, the camera. You put the camera on a baby? <laughs> no, no, sir, it's when you put it on a low tripod. What, the camera or the baby? <laughs> the, the camera. Oh, I know, I know, put the camera on a low tripod. Yes, that is. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Well, is that so the baby can reach it? <laughs> There is, there is no baby. We're not a real baby. I mean, it's got, it's got three legs. Three legs? Yes. Poor little blighter. <laughs> no need to worry. See, see, it is slang. It's, it's, it's slang for a, a, a low tripod. Oh, it's slang. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Right, and, yeah. and a bigger tripod is called a high tripe. And when photographers develop the film, sometimes they call it putting it in the soup. Soup? Mm. Well, you all seem to be very knowledgeable on the subject. Look at... I wonder if you would bring your camera with you when you come to dinner on Thursday. You see, it might be easier for me to get that warm, friendly atmosphere if I knew the photographer was taking the picture. You know, I, I am only a keen amateur, you know. Anything is preferable to having that Nancy boy back. <laughs> Even you. <laughs> Providing you don't say, give it to me, give it to me. No, I won't. <laughs> All right, let's settle then. See you on Thursday with your equipment. Yes. And your charming lady wife, of course. What? Will you be bringing the baby with you? The baby? Oh, yes, I probably will. In that case, I'll save it some soup. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Oh, thank you, baby. Thank you. <laughs> oh, <I'm sorry. laughs> Now, you sit down there, my dear, and while you're setting up your equipment, I'll uh, 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 take up the coffee. Oh, I say, there are some uh, chocolate mints there, if anybody cares for one. Oh, thank you, Sir Dennis. I couldn't eat another thing. No, well, you're not missing much anyway. They're pretty disgusting. I've been trying to get rid of them for weeks. <laughs> well, I'll go and uh, check up the coffee. Now, while I'm setting up the equipment, I want you to read this chapter on portrait photography. And remember, I'm relying on you to help Sir Dennis relax. I don't know if I'll be able to relax myself after that curry. Yeah. Oh, dear. It was rather hot, wasn't it? Yes. My throat's still burning. I could do with a drink. Yeah, take this. <laughs> no, thanks. I think I'll wait for the coffee. No, I don't want you to drink. Just move it. I hope you don't mind, Terry, but I did bring the other camera along. Oh, June. Well, Austin was very pleased with the photos I took. Only because, so to speak, I dropped out of the competition. Well, 
If you should find that flash unit a bit complicated, this camera has the flash unit built in. Yeah, but never mind the technical uh, complications. I can deal with those. You, you just concentrate on keeping Sir Dennis in the relaxed, warm mood he was in over dinner. Right. Sam! Yes! Oh, Sam! <laughs> ah, the coffee's gonna be delayed. The blasted housekeeper's blown the fuse of the percolator. Yeah. Oh, incompetent woman. Mm. If there is one thing I cannot stand, Mitchford, it is sheer incompetence. Yes, yes. Now, oh. let's get this ruddy photograph over. Where do you want me? <laughs> oh, over here, Sir Dennis. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, it is... The warm, relaxed photograph we want. Yes, well, I am warm and relaxed. <laughs> yes, but, I mean, you know, even more friendly if you can. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I am being friendly. Warm and friendly. You've no complaints, have you, Mrs. Oh, Bedford? no, 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 Sir Dennis, no. It's, it's just that perhaps it would be a better picture if you were a little more relaxed. <laughs> well, if I was any more relaxed, I'd be asleep. Come on, get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right, and I'll just frame you up properly. Yeah. Uh, the light isn't too good in here. Uh, Terry? Yeah. Now, please, June, I need all my concentration on this. Yes, I know. June, but... please, please. Look, I'm finding it very difficult to focus. I think you might find it a bit easier. June, look, will you please? I know you're trying to help. But, I mean, this is a much more complicated camera than the kiddies' box of tricks you've got. I just thought uh, it might be a bit easier if you took the lens cap off. <laughs> yes, well, we might try with it off for a change. <laughs> Any better? Uh, yes. Now, sir, if you could give me a big, warm smile. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. What? Godlike. Absolutely godlike, sir, but it isn't exactly warm and friendly, is it? Well, I can't help the way I smile, damn it. Another poncy male model. <laughs> no, of course not, Sir Dennis. Look, why don't you and I just chat about this and that, and then when Terry sees the right expression, he can take the picture. Yes, and, and try, yeah, try not to tilt your head too far back, otherwise I might shoot right up your nose. <laughs> no, you see, the exact angle of the head does influence the nasal proportions of the face. Uh, no need to take a damn tape measure to me now. <laughs> it's a perfectly ordinary nose. It is, it's a very handsome nose. <laughs> it's just that Terry is trying to get the focus absolutely right. Now, uh, you got what you want? Uh, yes, yes. Right. <laughs> What do we talk about? Politics? Oh, no. No, sir. No, anything, anything but politics. Religion? Uh, no, not religion. I was... Um, how about food? Yes, food. There's nothing controversial about food. And remember, it's a warm, friendly picture we want to take. Warm and friendly. Yes. Right. <laughs> Go on, then. Off you go. You start, Mrs Bedford. Oh, uh, yes, yes, Sir Dennis. Um, do you, uh, do you eat curry often? A couple of times a week. Housekeeper's pretty hot on them. Yes, she certainly is. Do you make curry yourself? Well, no. No, not often. Because uh, Terry really is rather fond of pasta. Pasta? Yes. You know, macaroni, spaghetti, that kind of thing? Do you mean Italian food? Yes. I can't stomach the stuff myself. Come to that, I can't stomach the Italians either. Because <laughs> I was there, you know. Anzio, I mean, afterwards. <laughs> if you'd seen what I'd seen, you'd have no time for the eye ties either. <laughs> They've been all over Jerry. Then the Americans came in, they were all over them. And then we got there. And they were all over you. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have a chance. Why wouldn't they have eye ties? <laughs> Sucking up to us with their filthy Campari and their rotten goat cheese. My God, the thought of it now makes me weak. Uh, Sir Dennis, Sir Dennis, this isn't exactly warm and friendly. No loyalty, you see. You know, forget about the Italians. Well, they didn't do much for Mussolini, did they? Well, they're not doing much for you either, sir. <laughs> what? Well, how can I keep taking a warm and friendly picture if, if you're going to relive the Second World War? Oh, I'm sorry, Medford. I suppose I should have told you right at the beginning, but you see, the trouble is I... I have this block. Block of what, sir? No, no, I mean a mental block. I simply cannot smile for the camera. Oh, I'm sure you can, Sir Dennis. Um, try saying cheese. Mm. Cheese. <laughs> yes, I see what you mean. It all dates back to my days at Gordonston. You see, we just won the rowing cup, and we were all lined up to have our photograph taken, holding our oars, and the photographer said, smile. Now, just at that moment, the housemaster standing immediately behind me sneezed. His false teeth hit me in the back of the neck. <laughs> and I'm afraid I 
I did the unforgivable. Oh, no. <laughs> what? I dropped my oar. <laughs> no. Oh, yes. Yes, I can see it to this day. It fell like a mighty oak and maimed matron. <laughs> Yes, I, I can see that it would be difficult to smile. Especially if you were matron. <laughs> you see, unless I can find something genuinely to smile at, I simply cannot supply the right expression. I'm sure we can provide that, sir. No yes. troubles with any. Uh, June, yes. tell him a joke. A joke? Yeah, wait till I get back behind the camera. Terry, I can't tell jokes. Yeah, tell the one you told at Christmas, you know, uh, about the magician. Mm. I got that out of a cracker. Oh, it made me laugh. Yes, I know, but you were... Uh, you were... <laughs> Full of the Christmas spirit. What do you mean he was plastered? No, no, Sir Dennis, no. Just a bit merry. Well, I'm merry. Not very merry. Fairly merry. <laughs> oh, go. I don't know if I can remember it. Yes, you can. It's about the magician walking down the street. Oh, and oh, suddenly... oh yes, yes, huh? yes, yes. I've got it, yes. Uh, uh, this magician... Now, wait, wait, wait. Well... Sir Dennis, now just relax and be prepared to be convulsed when you hear this joke. <laughs> <laughs> now... There was a magician. Action! <laughs> this was a magician walking down the street when suddenly he went into a chemist's shop. No. Oh, a butcher's shop. No. A florist? Well, no, no, the shop is immaterial. It's the fact he turned into... Okay. Oh, of course he turned <laughs> into it. <laughs> what, into the chemist shop? Yes. <laughs> What, was he after something? Um, I don't know. I, I suppose he might have been. I see. Well, go on, then. <laughs> um, that is the joke, I'm afraid. What is? Well, that this man was walking down the street and suddenly the magician, he went into... Turned! Oh, sorry, turned. sorry. He turned into a chemist shop. <laughs> I did say I couldn't tell jokes. No, you're absolutely right. That was dreadful. <laughs> My God, if you laughed at that, Medford, you must have been as drunk as a skunk. <laughs> it was out of a cracker, sir. Well, I shouldn't buy those crackers again, if I will. No, 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 Sir Dennis, we won't. I think they were foreign. Foreign? Yes, Japanese. Japanese? <laughs> no wonder it was an awful joke. They've got no sense of humour. Little yellow devils getting out of your feet everywhere that they don't. Sir Dennis! Trying to undercut the price of everything. Oh, please, relax, be friendly and warm. What, to the Japanese? Never! Oh, please, Sir Dennis, you're not helping things at all. No, don't look. We've all said that. We've all, we've, we've, <laughs> we've all got our foibles. I mean, I, I am I am accident prone, and Sir Dennis finds it difficult to smile in front of a camera. So we'll just have to relax and be calm, and we will find something that will make him genuinely smile. I think you may have found it. What do you mean? You just sat on the mint chocks. What? <laughs> oh, look at that! <laughs> 